Well, hey there, you're on the internet, I have some free time, and welcome to the Triple N Network, where all you newbie noob nerds can find all the news you'll need. Let's look at an ink today, shall we? Now, today's ink... Uh... <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's probably one of those inks that so many people have encountered. It's by a brand that's very prolific, Mont Blanc, and it's their black ink, which, I mean, everyone says that the most commonly used fountain pen ink is black ink. Uh, so, I assume this is everywhere. Uh, however, as you might be able to tell from this bottle, uh, it's pretty old. Um, I mean, not ancient, it's not like an antique, but this bottle actually came with my first, uh, I'd say real fountain pen. I was given uh, sort of disposable fountain pens when I was much younger. It was supposed to help me with my fine motor skills because I do have some learning disabilities and they thought this would help improve my handwriting. They were wrong, but uh, I did come to really enjoy fountain pens. So this bottle of ink is probably, at this point, yeah, maybe nearly 15 years old. Uh, now, you can kind of tell the difference between the old bottles and the new bottles. Naturally, these are, you know, a little more squared off. The tops are different. However, I didn't use this ink, in part because there's so little of it left, and I'm oddly nostalgic about it but also because I had plenty of the cartridges. Now, something that I feel like isn't pointed out quite enough when talking about Mont Blanc inks is, first of all, their cartridges are stamped with the name. The back generally has a little thing on it that denotes the color. Like, let me see, I think I got another one floating around here somewhere. Here's burgundy. See how the bottom has the thing? It has the name on there. If my camera would ever focus on what I want it to. But also, you might be able to tell the difference between a Mont Blanc cartridge and a standard cartridge. See this, this dip down here? See how there's a tiny little bit of a dip here, but it's not as significant as here. And so it's narrower at the front, and it's actually also broader at the base. So, just a little bit, but something to be aware of if you're trying to put this in certain fountain pens, especially more narrow ones, they can get stuck. Uh, I don't want to talk about how often that's happened to me, but it's something to be aware of. So, these tests uh, were done either with a straight cartridge or some emptied out cartridges because the tests were with this Retro 51 Tornado with a fine nib, which of course can take cartridges. In fact, it only takes short cartridges because despite the length of this barrel, there's like a stopper in the bottom. And actually this may or may not have been one of those pens that I got the cartridge stuck in because it got brought out the bottom. I refuse to answer that question. And also this Hero 616 with a broadened, wettened nib. And as you might be able to tell, you see how that feed isn't perfectly lined up? That's also the only way the feed will fit in there. That's the way I got it. But the end result is this is an ink cannon. This has just like ink pouring out of it when you write with it. It's very wet. So I thought that would be a nice contrast to this very moderate fine. Now, let's compare it to some other inks. Here it is down at the bottom. Mystery Black is the official name. There's definitely something going on in here. You can see there's almost like some red. Uh, and yet, at other times, there's almost like some hints of blue. Now, against water, it didn't do too well. And against bleach, all kinds of strange stuff happened. But uh, here's Noodler's Heart of Darkness, which is my favorite go to black ink. It is my black ink. That's what I use. I have yet to find anything that comes even close to it. Which you can tell, water didn't touch, bleach didn't do a thing. Also Noodler's Black Eel, which because of the eel component takes a little longer to dry, which also means when you do these smeary things, it looks like there's a ton of shading when in real life there's really not much. But again, water really didn't do much, bleach didn't do much. Here's Lamy Black. And yes, I say Lammy because I like the way it sounds, like, you know, if you were ever a Firefly, Firefly fan, you know, my sweet little Lammy toes, I know it's Lammy. I just like saying Lammy. So here's the water test. Didn't do great. And then, of course, the bleach test turned that ink bright orange. Here's Parker's Quink Black, where it turned blue with water, something this ink is famous for. And again, the bleach turned it kind of yellowy. And Noodler's Dark Matter, where again, water... Didn't do a whole lot, but a little something. And the bleach turned it orange. 
don't know, maybe that's a thing with black inks, but anyways, as you can tell, there's definitely something about this ink that is unlike any of these other inks. There is some kind of like purplishness to it, but uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, when it comes in cartridge packs, they come in these little things. I don't know if anyone else has noticed this, but Oyster Gray turns things pink. Which is funny for such a mild gray. Moving on, Mont Blanc, Mystery Black, Top Down in Density, Claire Fontaine, 90 grams per square meter. It's a, it's a true black, I'll say that. However, it does shade a bit. Um, perhaps not in the ink canon, but now my personal preference is that I don't like bla black inks that shade. Like, as you can see here, see how that's a bit darker than there? I mean, even up here at the top, different than the darker bits at the bottom. But this is a very genuine true black. And even in the fine pen, uh, there was a bit of a wet flow. I'd say it's, I'd say, I'd say it could be a six out of ten. Um, it's it's readily flowing. It's not gushing, but not knowing that, you know, not remembering that it is a bit wet, and then putting it in an ink cannon was insane. Um, yeah, it's if this camera will ever focus. I don't know if you'll be able to just tell, but uh, it was so pooling up on there. But yeah, the fine took 8 seconds to dry, the Ink Cannon Hero 616 took 28. Yeah, uh, there's no bleed, feather, or spread. I said there was bleed with the broad nib, and there is in just a couple places. Since it's so localized, I kind of don't know what to make of it. But again, this thing was just vomiting ink, this Hero 616, so I'm not too shocked with that. However, overall, it's very well behaved. Uh, there's no sheen. There is a teeny bit of shading, but not too much. Like, I would put up with it, and usually I hate that in a black ink. Again, the bleach test, it is absolutely gone. The water test just sort of made a mess. And here you can see where it's starting to turn sort of purpley. Now, again, the more ink that was put down, the harder it is to wash away, but not the best water resistance in that fine nib. Next is Rhodia 80 grams per square meter. Or again, I feel like you can really tell just how obscenely wet that 616 is. But yeah, here you still get a teeny bit of shading, not a lot, but yeah, the fine took 8 seconds, the ink cannon took 22. Uh, there's no bleed or feather, or sorry, there's no feather spread, there's near bleed in a few spots, I said, but I really can't find it on here, so maybe I was just really paranoid? I don't know. But the dry times didn't prove a bit, but yeah. Water test, really not great. Even the ink cannon, most of it got washed away and it's really patchy. The fine is just gone. And the bleach test, it's as if it was never there. So, next up is Tomoe River Paper, where uh, I feel like there should really be no shock. The broad and wet nib took 22 seconds. The fine took 10, which, uh, I mean, Tomoe River is known for really drawing out ink time, so. But here we also get this very interesting sheen. It's it's like from one direction it's red, and another direction it's gold. It's very unique. Uh, however, because of um, how this paper works, it really draws out dry times. It causes an odd kind of pooling. Uh, so you do get some shading on here. And I don't know if you'll be able to see, but there's a little bit of that sheen all through the words as well. However, it's a very pleasant black. Uh, yeah, I'd s I said that there's bleed through on here, at least I think that's what I said, but there really isn't, and there's just very significant echo because of how darn dark this ink is. This is very thin paper, and the ink cannon laid on a lot of it, so something to be aware of. However, this paper loves to let ink slide away when you add more water, and that's definitely what you get here. In fact, the camera's picking it up a bit better than the naked eye, and you see how that's almost kind of reddish? It has like some reddishness to it, isn't that strange? Bleach, totally gone. You would never know that there was anything there. But, come on, this isn't some schmancy noodler's ink, so. Yeah, so here's the world's worst 20 pound copier paper, where I really only use that uh, fine nib. It's a moderate fine, but since this is slightly wet uh, of an ink. Now, I did use it to write the name, and there you can see there's definitely some bleed, but Overall, that's really not too bad. You see a couple of dots almost come all the way through. You can definitely see them on this side, but they're not as obtrusive as like true bleed through. There is some spread. If we look at the difference in line width, there is a bit of broadening of the line. Uh, there's 
I said there's some bleed, some feather, and some spread, but I really don't see much of it. it took four seconds to dry. Here you don't really get much shading. It's more of a true black here. Uh, water test, not great. Did feather, did explode. However, it didn't all wash away. If your life depended on recovering that, you could. Bleach test, totally gone. Mead notebook paper. Again, I only use the ink cannon to write the name. But even on there, it's not nearly as bad as I would have expected from such a darn wet pen. I mean, just in some bits. And as you can see in the fine, you can sort of like see just the barest hints of all the writing, but it really didn't come through. There's really not even that much show through, which was quite impressive, four seconds to dry. A very pleasant black. Here, I feel like you can almost see that there's just a teeny bit of sheen in the wettest parts. But yeah, very well behaved. There is some spread. Uh, but really not much. Definitely not as much as on the copier paper. Very nice. Uh, however, the water test. This paper hates water. Uh, however, because it's more absorbent, more remained. Bleach test, it's obliterated. Now, I'll have to apologize. This is that Moleskine notebook paper that is freakishly well behaved. Therefore, I cannot guarantee similar results on other types of paper. Uh, see how it's like really shiny on the back? And this stuff, I think, is about 10 years old now, so I don't know. Maybe moleskin paper, like a fine wine, has to mature. But, yeah, I mean, on here you even get some of that sheen. And eight seconds, no bleed, no feather, no spread. My cat is angry that I locked her out. Again, like on the fancy paper, it's all washed away. Cat is really angry. Anyways, there you go, Mont Blanc Mystery Black. It's a genuine black. However, there's something to it which I feel like you can kind of see in the chromatography. It's like in some areas there's a little bit of blue, and in some areas there's like almost like a gold, and there's kind of a reddishness. It's a mystery, so mystery black definitely works. Um, yeah, it's actually fairly well behaved. It is slightly wet. Uh, does shade a bit, so if you're really picky like me and you don't like that, maybe something to be aware of. However, it's not terrible. So, yeah, there you go, Mont Blanc Mystery Black. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching. Bye.